Okay, I think we can get it started now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third community meeting for the Hopper Avenue Corridor Improvements Project from Coffee Lane to Highway 101. My name is Felicia Ong. I am an assistant engineer with the City of Santa Rosa Capital Projects Engineering Team, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation of this meeting can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our translator, Roberto, will translate what I have just said, and then our host, Kimberly, with the City of Santa Rosa, will explain how the meeting will work. Buenas noches a todos y bienvenidos a esta tercera reunión pública para el proyecto de mejoras al eje vial Avenida Hopper desde eh, Coffee Lane hasta la autopista 101. Mi nombre es eh, Felicia Ong, asistente del Departamento de Ingeniería de Proyectos Capitales del Ayuntamiento de Santa Rosa y quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos esta noche. La interpretación en directo de esta reunión se puede escuchar en el canal en español. Puede unirse al canal de español presionando el símbolo de interpretación en su pantalla de Zoom. Es un icono como globo terráqueo en la barra inferior de su pantalla. I'm going to start the translation here. Let's see. Just a moment. Okay, Roberto, there you go. You're you're in the uh, Spanish room now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. So um, once again, want to let our community members know as you are joining the meeting that you are participating as an attendee. So if you don't see your microphone or your camera on your toolbar, that is normal. Um, there will be opportunity for public comment at the end of the meeting. However, during the presentation, only the panelists will be viewed and, and during the public comment, only the panelists will be viewed on camera. Uh, please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project website envisionhopper.com follow following the meeting. You'll see that website a few times during our presentation this evening. And I'm gonna get a screen share back up. Thanks, Kimberly. <clears throat> Um, once again, I want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. Your participation and input are important to us as we review and discuss the revised concept designs along the Hopper Avenue corridor. <clears throat> the revised designs presented tonight are based on community input received during the Hopper Avenue community meetings and online surveys provided in November 2022 and March 2023. Tonight's meeting will cover project description, time frame, presentation, public comment, and next steps. For tonight's discussion, we will focus on the roadway corridor along Hopper Avenue from Coffee Lane to Highway 101 and your vision for its future use. We want to hear your feedback on the revised design concepts we are presenting tonight and how the design fits with your vision for the future of Hopper Avenue. Our intent is to review and review the revised design elements, features, and functionality, and respond to any feedback you may have. In addition to the feedback you provide tonight, an online survey will be available following this meeting to capture additional community input. A link to the survey will be placed on the project website in visionhopper.com. Now, I would like to introduce Brian Fletcher, principal with Calendar Associates, Brian and his team have listened intently and heard your comments through the 10-month community outreach process. 
Tonight, they will share the revised design concepts they have developed that reflect your vision for this vital community roadway. Following Brian's presentation, we will open the meeting for comments and questions so we can hear your thoughts on the refined designs and any comments you may have for this project. As we move through the presentation, if there is a slide you would like to comment on or ask a question, please try not to note the page number so we can return to that slide for reference. Brian, you have the floor. Great, thank you, Felicia. I hope everyone can see my screen okay. Uh, hello, my name is Brian Fletcher, and I'm a principal with Calendar Associates Landscape Architecture, or CALA. It has been a pleasure, a real pleasure, working with the community on these developing alternatives, and I'm excited to show you the latest refinements. The main purpose of tonight's meeting is to present the preferred design plan for Hopper Avenue that was prepared based upon the feedback received during the first and second community meetings, along with the corresponding online surveys. At the end of the meeting, you will have a chance to ask questions and provide comments. To begin, we have a couple live polling questions for you to answer that will give us some insight about who is on the call. These questions will also be available on the survey that you can participate in after tonight's meeting. Use your mouse to click on your answers. And Kimberly is going to bring that up in just a second. So the two questions are, did you attend the last community meeting? And the second question is, in which of the following zip codes do you currently live? So we're trying to understand whether you participated in the past and whether you are a resident or in close proximity of Hopper Avenue. We'll give this a second for people to uh, provide their feedback. Well, great. So it looks like we've close to 50-50 on uh, whether people were at the last meeting or not. Um, and then it looks like the vast majority of people are actually within the area code of, of Hopper Avenue. So that's, that's great. Um, so I'm going to be going over a lot of background. So for those that didn't attend the last meeting, you'll be um, brought up to speed very quickly here. With that, I'll close the polling and then we'll move on. Great. Just a, mi a bit more on the project background and goals. Funding for the project comes from the PGE settlement and is intended to repair the damage to Hopper Avenue caused by the fire and reconstruction efforts. It also allows for community input to be an integral part of the design process. Project goals include working with the community and stakeholders to develop a collective vision, a vision that accommodates multiple modes of travel, including pedestrians, bicyclists, and vehicles, while at the same time providing traffic calming measures to slow cars down without impacting emergency evacuation routes. We are also open to hearing your thoughts on other project goals that we may not have indicated. There are other projects currently happening in the area that our project will coordinate with. These include gas main improvements, additional road work, and roadway landscape repair that is already underway. This slide illustrates the project timeline and process. As you can see, this is our third community workshop. 
we have used input received during the prior meetings and surveys to develop the preferred plan we are presenting tonight. We hope you feel that the alternative responds to that input and we conclude phase one of the project. In late summer, fall, we hope to begin phase two, which will include more detailed design and construction. Construction right now is estimated to be complete by the fall of 2025. As Felicia mentioned, the project limits we are focusing on are from Coffee Lane on the left side of the slide to Highway 101 on the right. We have broken the project into three distinct segments based upon their unique characteristics. First, there is a residential zone from Coffee Lane to Skyview Drive and Banyan Place. Then there is a transition zone from Skyview and Banyan to Airway Drive, which leads to the final commercial zone from Airway to Highway 101. Here are a couple pictures of the residential zone. In the image on the left, you can see the wide open configuration of travel lanes, buffered bike lanes, and center turn lane. The image on the right shows the damaged sidewalks and planter strips where trees used to be. These are some pictures of the transition zone that is in between the residential and commercial zones. The image on the left is at the Piner Creek Trail and shows a very similar roadway configuration to the residential zone. However, you can see the sidewalk configuration is different and inconsistent throughout this zone, as shown in the right image. Both images show a greater number of trees but not necessarily all of them are at the back of curb. Lastly, here are a couple pictures of the commercial zone. The image on the left shows the roadway configuration and lack of bike lane on the south side. You can also see the sidewalks and a greater number of street trees. The image on the right shows the mural at the storage facility. During the first community meeting, we showed, <clears throat> we showed images of potential improvements that could happen along the corridor for inspiration. These included pedestrian improvements, such as wider sidewalks and increased visibility crosswalks. We also shared options for different bike lane configurations, as well as beautification elements, such as median islands, street trees, gateway signs, and decorative pavements. These graphics summarize what we heard after the first community workshop. We received 116 total responses, survey responses. From the graph on the top left, you can see most of the survey participants were residents that live around Hopper Avenue and in the 95403 zip code. On the right, we asked what types of improvements were most important. Half of the participants thought beautification was most important, with the remaining priorities split between pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicular improvements. The design elements that ranked high in the responses were roadway landscaping, safe bike lanes, and improved sidewalks and crosswalks. There was also a desire to provide traffic calming measures and reduce vehicle speeds. And we know the road surface needs to be repaved. Based upon these comments, we developed a series of preliminary design alternatives that were presented during the second community workshop. Starting at the residential zone, two alternatives were presented. They both illustrated buffered bike lanes, a single vehicular lane in either direction, a center median with turn lanes when required, 
and new wider straight sidewalks with a planter strip buffer. The two alternatives differed in that alternative number two included sidewalk bulb outs at intersections. Within the transition zone, we presented two alternatives. Alternative number one continued a similar cross section as the residential zone by straightening out the lanes, adding medians where possible, providing a large buffer for the bike lanes and continuing the planter strip along the sidewalks. Alternative number two still includes an improved sidewalk on the right side but the drainage area has been expanded to cover the large area of open pavement that exists today. The expanded drainage area could be used to clean stormwater and provide additional landscaping. The center median was removed so that the pavement width does not become too narrow for emergency vehicle access. Finally, in the commercial zone, we presented a single alternative, which proposed adding a bike lane along the left side to close the gap in the bicycle infrastructure. This required reducing bike and travel lane widths. So these are the graphics that summarize what we heard after the second community workshop. We received 258 survey responses, more than double that of the first survey. The graphs on the left indicate an even greater percentage of participants were residents that live around Hopper Avenue and in the 95403 zip code. On the right is the input for the alternatives. For the residential zone, there was a clear preference for alternative number two, which included bulb outs. For the transition zone, the numbers were closer, but there was a slight preference for alternative one, which removed the drainage area and maximized the buffer between cars and bikes. For the commercial zone, we received significant feedback that more needed to be done to improve the visibility and safety of the bikes. Finally, the word cloud helps to visualize themes found within the general comments. This included a number of comments on landscaping and other design enhancements. Now I will walk you through the preferred designs and supporting materials while pointing out where plans have been updated. First, we'll start in the residential zone and the existing conditions. If you look at the map along the bottom of the screen, this condition occurs between Coffee Lane and Skyview and Banyan. The street corridor is very open. There are seven foot wide bike lanes with a wide bike buffer on each side of the street. And a travel lane in each direction with a center turn lane in the middle. On each side of the street, there is a narrow sidewalk and planting areas that zigzag back and forth. Here is the preferred plan for the residential zones, and it is an enhancement of alternative number two presented at the last meeting. Some feedback we received on the previous concept was to provide a physical barrier between bikes and vehicles. We did explore providing a raised curb or other phys physical delineators. However, it would have reduced the space for emergency vehicles to safely navigate the corridor and would hamper the ability to use standard street sweeping equipment within the bike lanes. Instead, we increase the visibility of the bike buffers by including flexible bike bollards within the corridor, which you can see on the image on the right. We also wanted to provide you with more, a, de a more detailed plan view of these improvements. This plan represents what the street would look like from the air looking down. We have relocated the bus stop on Coffee Lane 
to just past the intersection. The station configuration puts the shelter on a raised island and allows bikes to circulate between the sidewalk and the island, reducing conflicts with buses. You can also see proposed bulb outs at intersections, high visibility crosswalks throughout, and the planting concept with consistent tree, street, <laughs> street tree plantings that work with existing light pole spacing. Moving on to the transition zone from Skyview and Banyan to Airway Drive, here are the existing conditions looking west. There is a large area of open pavement on the right side that leads to a drainage area. This is the part of the road that we are looking to change. Here is the preferred plan for the transition zone, which is an, is an enhancement of alternative number one presented at the last meeting. We refined the alternative because it provides the most separation for bicyclists, which has been a consistent theme in the comments. Refinements include the use of flexible bollards and highlighting an opportunity for a community gateway as you enter the neighborhood, as seen in the median. This is the detailed plan for the transition zone, which is an enhanced, oh, sorry. It looks to create raised medians where, they're, where they do not interfere with turning movements in and out of existing driveways. There are a lot of existing trees to remain within this section, but we will look for opportunities to infill with new trees. Just after Airway Drive, we see an opportunity for a neighborhood gateway within the median nosing and at Airway, you will see high visibility crosswalks and dashed green bike lanes at potential conflict zones. Finally, you will notice a slightly different lane transition for the westbound lane. More on that shortly. The last area is the commercial zone. Here are the existing conditions, and you can see that there is no bike lane on the left side. There are also two travel lanes in each direction, which is different from other segments. We heard your comments about ways to increase bicycle safety in this segment. Traffic counts were reviewed with the city and it was determined that it would be feasible to drop one of the two westbound lanes. That space could then be utilized to create wider bike lanes at seven feet and include three foot buffers with flexible bollards on both sides. This combination will greatly improve bicycle lane safety. The detailed plan further illustrates the dropped westbound lane and the buffered bike lane concept. In order to accomplish this bike lane trend, in order to accomplish this bike lane, transition zones would require improvements beyond the Highway 101 ramps. As mentioned before, we have identified an opportunity for a neighborhood gateway feature within the first transition zone median. For this sign concept, we took inspiration from the newly installed sign at Coffee Neighborhood Park so that there could be design consistency. Alternatively, instead of a sign, a piece of public art could signify the entrance to the neighborhood. We certainly would like to hear your input on which alternative you'd prefer. Lastly, we wanted to provide further detail on the developing landscape concept plan. This is a small vignette of the roadway utilized to show where different plant materials could be located. We worked closely with city staff charged with maintaining this landscape on the planting concept. Our tree palette includes large canopy trees in the median, such as London plain or oak trees, more columnar trees along the sidewalk, such as Zelkovas, to reduce impacts to adjacent neighbors, 
and accent trees such as Arbutus or Pops of Color. The ground plane will be largely ornamental grass type plants such as Muhlenbergia, Lamandra, and Juncus with Pops of Color from perennial drought tolerant species such as Flomus, Yarrow, and Callistamon. We also wanted to clarify that the city is intending to maintain the entirety of new landscaping and at this time. And at this time, we are not proposing any vines or other attachments to the sound walls since those require additional maintenance and often attract rodents. So we wanted to close tonight by asking one final poll question. Which of the proposed improvements are you most excited about? And again, use your mouse to, to um, pick as many that apply. Okay, great. So it looks like uh, we hit on the landscape, the beauty of the landscape. Um, certainly the wide continuous sidewalks and the newly paved street. So we certainly appreciate the feedback and, and I'll pass it over to you, Felicia. Thank you, Brian. At this time, we would like to hear from you, our community, so we will now move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. Before we begin, I will ask Kimberly to review how you can participate by asking live questions or pro provide comments. Kimberly? Thank you, Felicia. Once we call for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. When you're called on, the host will send a prompt to enable your sound and you will need to respond. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so our panelists may respond to your question. If you need to have your question translated, please let us know once you've been called on, and then please allow us a moment to confirm the translator is ready. Please remember to speak slowly so our translation team can relay your question. Anyone wishing to ask a question or a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand to use the Zoom raise hand feature. And again, if you're calling in, star nine to raise your hand. So let's take a look at our attendees. Uh, first up in our line uh, is Debbie. So Debbie, you'll receive a prompt. As soon as you respond to the prompt, your sound should be enabled. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Thank you. I First of all, I wanted to say thank you for the uh, amount of effort that went into it. I'm very excited to see the see this take place. But I have two comments. Well, one is I love the sign versus the artwork. It kind of identifies our neighborhood coffee park. The second is underneath the trees. Uh, my concern is maintenance and weeds growing up along the strips. As I drive along Stony Point, on Stony Point and the adjacent roads, for example, there are medium strips there and it's uh, weeds and just over time, it's just, it looks bad. I had asked if uh, someone could take a look at actually inside Coffee Park where there are some areas underneath trees where they had taken pebbles and actually glued them into place and the weeds are unable to come up around there. So I wondered if anyone had taken a look at that and I know 
people said that it will be maintained, but that is always the goal that will, it will be maintained. But then as I look at other older areas that have the similar medium strip, it has not been maintained. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie, for that, uh, for those comments and uh, that question. Um, in terms of your question about weed maintenance in the mediums, we will take a look at different types of weed barriers when it comes to actually uh, designing and picking out the trees and types of plantings that will go in that area. And if I could just add to that, uh, we worked uh, closely with the city parks crews that are that are responsible for the maintenance and had very frank conversations with them about what um, what plant materials can um, can help them uh, provide maintenance and, and exactly what you're talking about. So when I talked about grass like or ornamental grass like plantings, these are these are the ones that they've had the most success with infilling and drowning out the weeds and the easiest for their crews to maintain those. So um, we will continue to refine and, and look at um, what you mentioned, the rocks within the neighborhood, um, and we'll continue to work with the parks uh, crews to, to refine that. Thank you, because there's no maintenance required on the rocks. Thank you. And um, just a quick reminder, Debbie, uh, you will be able to provide feedback on the gateway um, sign or artwork in the survey that will be posted online. Okay, next up on our list, it looks like we have uh, Alexa Forrester. Alexa, you should be receiving a prompt. Hello, everybody. Um, I, my name is Alexa Forrester, and I am an organizer with Bikeable Santa Rosa, and we are advocating for safe bike routes. And I just wanted to take a, um, a this moment to say thank you for really listening to what um, people who are using bikes for transportation need to get safely from point A to point B. We're just really pleased with a lot of these. And I couldn't give you fine grain feedback on what I'm really excited about, but um, one of the things that we often hear complaints about is the interaction between buses and bikes. So we really appreciate the um, areas where you've put those bike islands, you know, the islands um, out so that the bikes can go behind them and, and, uh, and the improvements you made in the commercial zone. So we're looking forward to riding on this. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Thanks, Alexa. Next up, we have Chris Gunther. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. Um, I am also an organizer with Bikeable Santa Rosa, uh, so I'll be quick, but just want to also say thank you. Really, really like uh, where this has ended up and just want to appreciate especially how far we've come from the initial designs and really the iterative process and the emphasis on community engagement, I think that have helped get us here. Um, obviously really love the protected bike lanes. Um, also really like the removal of the lane in the commercial zone. Um, in the last meeting, my comment really emphasized the importance of making that zone accessible to pedestrians and cyclists because it's important for them to be able to get to destinations like uh, the coffee shop and other businesses along that corridor. Um, and I know there are more businesses coming in at this point. I think there's a real potential for you know, increased investment and vibrancy along that stretch. And I think this, this design is going to really support that. And I think that extends as well to the beautification efforts. Our focus is, a, is around not just bikes, but really creating really people-friendly streets. And I think this goes a long way to enacting that vision. Um, my one question was on the bollards for the protected bike lanes in the um, sketches, they look rather far apart, sort of farther apart than other installations of them that we're used to seeing, including the new lane on Armory Drive. And I wondered whether that is you know, true to, or a true representation of the distance 
And if so, if you could comment on why that is, why they can't be a little bit closer to provide a bit more protection. But again, thanks so much. Really, really like this design. Alicia, if you want, I can respond to that one. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, Chris, thanks for your comments. Um, yeah, the, the exact spacing we're going to continue to refine as we move into construction documents. But one thing that we need to balance is the ability for cars to be able to um, have a refuge when an emergency vehicle is coming by. Um, and that is the um, main reason for taking a look at a little bit wider spacing between those bollards in order for the cars to be able to pull into the zone for emergency purposes only. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just curious what the, you know, what the standards are and, you know, if we can hold up those standards in uh, every instance, but thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up on our list, we have Becky. Hi. Um, I just want to say that I, I think everything looks really great. I've been to the past couple meetings. Um, the sign uh, uh, of entering Coffee Park, I think that's great. It keeps reminding everybody that this is a neighborhood uh, because we call it Hopper Raceway. So I was wondering if um, what the speed limit might be, because even though I know right now it's 35, I don't think anybody goes 35 down Hopper Avenue. So that was one of the questions and one of my main concerns uh, for the safety of even getting out of our of our side streets because we live on Hop uh, right behind Hopper. Um, the other thing is I think the landscape is great. I think that. Kind of helps give it a neighborhood feeling. I just hope it's uh, it maintained. Um, I noticed Coffee Park is having a little bit of problems with the maintenance out there. So maybe if we get things that aren't too awful, uh, grow too awful huge and out of control, that would be a great idea. Something wouldn't hurt the concrete. Yeah, something that wouldn't wouldn't hurt the concrete out there. But otherwise, I think that. You guys have done a great job. I'm, I'm really liking it. But the speed limit, yes, that's a big, a big thing on our plate uh, because of the noise level and the racing. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Um, thanks for your comments and your question, Becky. I think for the speed limit, uh, Rob, do you have any comments on that? Sure. Hi, I'm Rob Sprinkle, Deputy Director for Traffic Engineering. Um, yeah, we will we will reevaluate the speed limit once the implementation has taken place. Um, also, what's coming up in um, yeah. mid um, twenty twenty four is uh, Senate Bill or Assembly Bill, excuse me, AB forty three, which will also allow us um, to lower speed limit in certain areas. So we're like to be looking at actually all the streets throughout the city of Santa Rosa to see where we can um, lower speed limits. And of course, Hopper would be included in that list. Thanks, Rob. Um, and Brian, did you have any input on the uh, the p potential plantings that wouldn't damage the sidewalks? Yeah, we are very careful these days to select trees that are, are more appropriate for um, sidewalk and street configurations, that their roots kind of play nicely with curbs and sidewalks. Um, and where we have to, we end up putting uh, root control barriers to protect curbs. Um, but more importantly, we've got a continuous planter strip with which helps kind of direct those roots along that corridor and, and not searching out for additional water within the roadway. So um, we hear you loud and clear. Great, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Becky. Uh, next up we have Linda. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm a resident on one of the side streets. And I'm wondering if this proposed plan addressed 
any of the side streets like Starview and Crestview because what I'm seeing is they're doing a lot of patchwork and I don't understand how that, it's really not making the, the street any safer. It's making it more irregular. So is this only about the Hopper area or is it also include the streets that were damaged in the fire that come off of Hopper? Um, I'm sorry, I, I missed a little bit of that. It kind of broke up for me. Could you, could you repeat that question, Linda? Yeah. Does this plan only address Hopper or does it also address what's going on with the residential streets that branch off Hopper? Um, yes, so this this specific project will only be addressing Hopper uh, Hopper Avenue. There will be a separate project that will be addressing the uh, roads that are damaged that were damaged during the fire and the debris removal. Um, that project is called the Coffee Park in Fountain Grove Neighborhood Road Disaster um, Recovery Project. Thanks. I have a few more comments. Sure. I'd like to know that the people choosing the plants took into consideration the combustibility. Uh, I'm concerned about having grasses in a public way um, because grasses are highly combustible. And I'm concerned about having plants that tend to grow leggy and then look kind of like flowers on the end of lots of dead stems like yarrow, the Achillea. Um, I'm also concerned about putting stones as a barrier for weeds because stones may not burn and weeds may not come there, but then they heat the earth and make it, un make it difficult for roots to grow. Um, and thrive. So th those are just a couple concerns I have about the landscaping. Yeah, I can certainly address the the landscape concerns, uh, but as far as combustibility and in um, dead stems, um, so we have been working closely with parks crews that um, understand the maintenance requirements of of the various um, plant materials and such. Um, grasses for them are easily topped um, at the end of the year, um, as well as the dead dead heads from the yarrow and, and such. As far as combustibility, we also worked uh, with the fire department on the Fountain Grove, Grove planting project um, and worked closely with them on the plant material and the design of, of where the plant material would be placed in and around trees and not creating fire ladders and, and such. So we use the same concepts that we discussed with the fire department at that point um, within Hopper Avenue. And my comments about stones, I mean, I know rocks don't burn, I understand that, but um, layers of mulch will bring nutrients to the soil and they, it will be an environment for roots of plants to thrive, putting stones on top as a mulch, just, it, it bakes the roots. They just, the stones just heat up and it's it's gonna require more water and the plants won't thrive. Yeah, I think for comments like that, we've heard um, both sides and it's our job not to, at this stage, say one is better than the other, but just to take the comments, um, evaluate how uh, we would address those in the planting concept kind of moving forward. I think there's always a balancing act um, that we have to take, um, trying to reduce overall maintenance efforts, trying to maintain um, kind of beautification, um, and then also certainly sensitivity to um, the fire hazard. So we hear both of the comments and we're taking those in and, and we'll continue to evaluate the planting concept as we um, move the project forward. I have one more comment. Sure. And 
I agree with the people that have said the coffee park sign is great for identifying that it's a neighborhood. I think that's really important. But as a professional artist, I don't, uh, I'd like to consider also art in public places separate from, yes, we need to identify our neighborhood. I, I agree with that. But that doesn't mean we should just throw um, art in public places out the window. I think that should be something that's kind of hovering in the background. It might be in the future, people might need to get grants. I understand all that, but I don't think it has to be one or the other. I, it could be done in stages. But I do agree that the coffee park neighborhood needs to be identified with a sign. Great. I appreciate the comments, Linda. Thank you, Linda. Do we have another raised hand, Kimberly? Yeah, we have uh, Pamela. Hi, um, I live in the neighborhood and I'm very glad to see this. I remember shortly after the fire meeting with neighbors and having us sketch little ideas like this. And so uh, this coming to fruition is great. I have a question about something that's a little bit more recent and I um, there's a lot of problems with sideshows that happen along these strips and in these like on the on the different intersections. And I'm wondering if there can be any mitigation efforts incorporated into this at those intersections and even at the coffee hopper intersection up at Starview, up at Banyan, because this is these are places that those things have happened. And is there anything that could be part of the plan that can help mitigate that issue? Alicia, do you want me? Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was just going to thank Pamela for her question <laughs> and see and ask you, Brian, kind of uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Felicia. And thank you, Pamela. I really appreciate the comment. Um, yeah, ab absolutely. I, I, we were, I think Felicia and I were just talking about this very recently. Um, when you look at the roadway right now, it, it very much resembles more of a drag strip than a neighborhood street. Um, it has wide, unobstructed um, swaths of asphalt. Um, it doesn't have street trees. Um, it, it is just, um, again, it's 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 a magnet for speeding, a uh, magnet for other activities that shouldn't be happening because of um, the width and, and unobstructed. What we hope with the addition of large canopy trees to bring that onto the roadway with the addition of raised medians within the center of the roadway with the addition of bulb outs at the intersections which which will neck down the perceived width of the asphalt um you know the, the lanes still stay the same width but there's not that extra space it's being taken up by curb and landscape we very much feel like that's gonna have a positive impact on those negative situations. Beyond that, it be starts to become an, an enforcement issue, um, you know, where if we can't have an improvement that, um, it's, it's more of an enforcement issue than a design issue. So I think it's, as kind of Rob said about speed, I think it's prudent to have the improvements go in and reevaluate the speed and reevaluate those issues at, at that time. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Pamela. And I'm looking at our list, trying to make sure if anyone who hasn't yet had a chance to comment. Uh, it looks like we have uh, Spencer. Yes, hi, this is Spencer. Um, I just wanna thank you guys so much for uh, planning all this. We're really excited about it. And um, I arrived a little late, so my apologies. You probably already said this, uh, but the first um, three pictures have what looks like turf between the trees. Is that turf or grass? Or if you could just sh shed some light on that, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, I certainly can answer that. Thank you, Spencer. Um, no, those, this is a preliminary graphic. Um, the green does not represent turf, it represents planting space. Um, we went over, let me try to go back. Um, we went over what those green areas could look like um, with this slide, um, having a combination of larger canopy street trees, narrower columnar street trees adjacent to the residents, and then underneath um, a majority of grass-like, ornamental grass-like plants like Molenbergia, Lamandra, and Juncus in photographs four, eight, and 10, um, and then some spot pops of color as well. So that's, this gives you a little bit different uh, image of, of what those green areas would look like. Got it. That makes total sense. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you, Spencer. Do we have another hand, Kimberly? I don't see any other hands at this moment. Um, there is a reminder here. Not sure if you saw that, but there was a reminder to ask our participants to please provide their feedback on the gateway by taking the online survey because a couple of our attendees, I believe have mentioned the, um, mm -hmm. a, a couple of our questions and comments mentioned that gateway. So there's there's more opportunity to provide feedback on that online survey. And I think we have a concluding slide. Brian, you had a, a slide that, sh there we go. So, Okay, um, I think with no further questions, I would like to express my appreciation and thanks to the members of the public, the panelists, interpreter, and our host for our participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and provide your input on the Hopper Avenue Quarter Improvements Project. Next will be final design, design build consultant selection, and the start of construction that is estimated in 2024. As I mentioned earlier, in addition to your participation tonight, we would also like to thank, we would also like you to visit the project website listed on the screen, envisionhopper.com, and take our online survey, which will remain open through September 13th. We also encourage you to follow the project's progress and live updates on the website. Thank you again for participating tonight and good night. And I'm gonna just leave this open for another moment or two so that people can uh, have plenty of opportunity to grab that information. And also offer my thanks and wish everybody a really great evening. Thank you, everyone. It's really been a pleasure working with you. All right. I think that does it for us tonight. So uh, goodbye and have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.